What's up and welcome back to the Kind of Funny Games cast. Of course, I am Tim Geddes. Today, I'm joined by the new face of video games, Blessing Adeoye Jr. Good day, Tim. The Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Good day, Tim. The Big Daddy himself, Greg Miller. Ah! Oh, my God. God. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm a wild card. I had a can of Coke and some Cheez-Its. Who knows what I'm going to do. That got me good, man. Woo! Okay. Be good. Woke yeah. me up. Like Greg, I ended clock. on you because I, I wanted to ask how you're feeling. This is one of the final times I'm going to talk to you before you head to New York. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the Ghostbusters premiere. I know we talked about it a couple of different times, but like, I don't think we really talked about how, how crazy this is. Yeah. You go to a, Ghostbusters, a real Ghostbusters movie premiere. Yeah, well. I'm going to a Ghostbusters movie premiere. You say real Ghostbusters, people oh. think I'm going to go to the animated Ghostbusters. No, they don't. I want to make sure they understand. I don't think saying. anybody. <laughs> a lot of people did, Andy. <laughs> Look at the comments. <laughs> By the way, I turned the TVs off out here for some reason. Uh, yeah, I have not had a second to actually process. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, of course, are teamed up with the mix for GDC. The showcase is Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, usually the game's daily thing, 60 indies, and then Monday, we're doing the all-day live stream where we're bringing in like a dozen developers and showing their games, right? So I'm trying to get all of that lined up appropriately before I leave, which means taking an entire week of work and condensing it into two days. Yeah. So I don't think until thursday maybe when i ride in the ecto one it'll finally really be like i can do maybe on the plane tomorrow i'll be able to clear my head a bit and be like all right i'm here so that's what's happening you know what i mean but watch it we did the marathon yesterday where i live streamed and uh, live reacted uh, to all three ghostbuster movies leading into frozen empire of course available now youtube.com slash kind of funny games uh it's a fun time you should go watch it and like there you know like when i'm crying during afterlife and stuff it kind of sets in of like all right i'm ready i'm the you know, frozen empire is next and there's I'm going to see a new Ghostbusters movie yeah. in theaters. You know what I mean? Like I'm sitting there and I'm reflecting uh, with Nick on the 84 thing about memories. I'm telling Mike about watching Ghostbusters 2 and the logo coming on and I couldn't hide my smile from my mom. So it's like, and then of course bringing Ben to Ghostbusters uh, when he Afterlife. Was how old, Greg? He was less than a month, maybe a month, I think maybe. <laughs> I love that. You know One I mean? day, that's that was a cool day. Yeah, yeah. That was a great day. Yeah, it was the first time hanging out with most of you clients. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like renting out a theater and doing it. So it's like, such a weird, obviously, Ghostbusters is such a touchstone in my life. But yeah, I, I haven't fully comprehended. And also, you know how I am about all these things where when I made the Hail Mary to go to the movie premiere, I was very much like, no pressure. If it happens, it doesn't. And they're like, I think we can. We think we can. We think we can. So I was always like, it's not going to happen. not going to happen. Then I got it. Great. And now it's the thing of they were like, all right, here's you're invited. Here's your plus one. Great. We'll follow up next week, which would be now this week, obviously, with information about the day and i haven't gotten that yet so now i'm just like i'll be in the back i'll just be chilling yeah. you know what i mean like i don't know what i'm getting into on the day if i'm actually going to be like if there's an after party if i'm invited you know blah blah i'm happy just to be there obviously totally so it's like i'm still very much like it's still very not real i don't know when it will be real to me that'd be great real ghostbusters everybody uh real but enough about that the, this is the kind of funny games cast reach every week we get together to talk about video games and all the things that we love about them if you like that you can get the kind of funny membership you can get it on youtube or patreon and it gets you the show ad free you can watch live as we record it and you get a daily exclusive show greg where where he gets to talk about whatever he wants to and something tells me he's gonna be talking a lot about ghostbusters next week sure when he well. comes back it's gonna be really exciting to see it again too Oh, yeah? And then we're going to do in review, of course, uh, for baby. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Uh, coming up when, very when is soon. That? When is that? Next week, baby. Next week. We're watching it. We're just going to watch it like... like and Normies. Thursday. Cool. Yeah. And then God's What's your fucking week excuse now? That. What do you got to do on Thursday? Are you streaming for 18 hours? What are you doing? No, I'm just... I'm Honestly, I'm excited to get some mozzarella sticks or something at the theater. Like, I'm just... I want to, you know, let's do this. Let's do this right, everybody. This. How do you feel about that, Bless? I feel pretty good. Mott sticks. You in? Mott's, uh, no, yeah, at the, the movie Mott's theater? Mott. Probably not at the movie theater, no. I'll yeah. get them at a side if I'm having, like, you know, chicken wings or something. But mm -hmm. here's what, I'm going to stop you right here if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So are you insulting the quality of the mozzarella stick at the movie theater, or are you just saying I've, it's not a movie I've, theater food? Both. I've never had mozzarella sticks at Neither a movie have theater. Neither have I. Neither have I. And that, I don't want to have mozzarella sticks. My thing sticks about this is mozzarella theater. sticks, and I'm saying something outrageous. Holy you know? shit. Here we go. 90% of the time aren't that good. They're yeah. great, but they're not that, you know, they're garbage food. They're sure. just fried cheese. Yeah. So I imagine the ones you're getting at Cheesecake Factory are going to be the same ones you're getting at the no. movie theater. Yeah. I, but I think I, I think the bar gets lower. I think like once it, well, if, your base, fryer, probably. if your base for mozzarella sticks is like, okay, well, these aren't that great anyway. I yeah. think that they're going to be bad at the movie I mean, theater. I've had, maybe like I just station. had such great mozzarella it's sticks. It's like getting sushi at the it's gas like station. They put where it's like you know what you're getting into. Yeah. 
I'm also realizing right now that I'm wearing my fancy jacket. I'm not going to say why I am, but I'm realizing <laughs> that all of us were dressed nice earlier. We all changed. And we're not. And I didn't bring another jacket in a cold. <laughs> so I'm not mad at it, but it is very, now, very funny to look at this right now. Philippe Torres says fried pickles are better. Oh. And 1,000% agree. Come oh, on now. Oh, man. You know oh, what I mean? Goodness. Some pluckers. It's also, it's a you know, it's a crap shoot. Eating, you know, also true. Because crap might shoot out my ass if I eat wow. mozzarella sticks. Wow. Like, like that one time. Depending on how cheesy and real they are, the more processed and fake they are, You're I'm fine. usually kind of okay. But if they're like... Well, that 21st Amendment date I took you and Kevin oh, on that one time. Oh, man. Back at the studio with one shared restroom, me and Kevin just swapping <laughs> spots nonstop. We almost co-op that toilet. I'll tell you what. Oh, my God. <laughs> Riding like a oh, double-decker bus in London. Segway, but I can't. Uh, but what I can say is thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kieran Hovasapien, and Delaney Twining. Thank you so very much for your support. Um, but enough of all that. Greg mentioned this a little bit. Bit earlier, but some housekeeping for you. The Mix and Kind of Funny have teamed up for the Spring Game Showcase. 60 Indies will strut their stuff Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, the usual Kind of Funny Games daily time. Come watch on our channels, the Mix channels, IGN, or GameSpot. Anywhere you want to watch, you could watch it there. I say you watch it with us, though. You know what I mean? Why? Yeah. Why? That'd be great. And then we're going to do games daily after that, so it'll be fun. And then after that, um, Kind of Funny Game Showdown. Finale. Friday's gonna, the season finale of Series that. So, finale? Season finale. Series? Season Maybe it's finale. Series. Uh, but you've got to come, started. hang out, check it, see if you're going to have a good time. I guarantee you that you will because I don't want to say anything too much, Greg. Yeah. But I did see the uh, the cut so far of what we have at the showcase. A lot of cool games. Ooh. Yeah. A lot of really, yeah, yeah, really, yeah, really no, cool sure, games sure, there. Sure. So you're going to want to come through for that. I already it, talked about Blessings Guns, too. He looks really good in his part. He does Thank look you. good. And he has I a great bit. More. In fact, I'll take this off. He played it off well. Oh, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls a fucking muscle, oh, taking, like, blows out his tricep like CM Punk. Oh, ah, my ah, lord. Ah. All right, we are seven minutes into the show. Let's talk about what we're here to talk about, which is the game of the year so far. It is March 12th as we're recording this. We are most of the way through Q1 of 2024. Um, there's a couple weeks left, a couple game releases uh, left in all of this, but just given some schedules and stuff. Now felt like the right time to talk about this, maybe look a little bit ahead at uh, the rest of Q1. Q1, Q2, what we're kind of seeing might pop into our, our uh, game of the year list so far. But I asked each of you to bring your top three, top five lists currently. But I guess I want to start off with, do you even have those? Are you, is there a list that you feel confident in? Don't say anything, just a yes or a no, Andy. Uh, eh. Yeah? Like, like an eh, kind of. Okay. I can give you some games that I know will maybe not even make the top 10 by the end of the year based on whatever else is going to come out. So we'll see. Yeah. I don't know, man. Greggy. I'm confident in one and two. Yeah. Beyond that, I'd be, you know, I don't think I have something where I'm like, Oh, this is definitely it. That's this is when you're like, okay, at this point, what are your game of the year versus what will actually be in the conversation for game of the year? I think my one and two will definitely still be very high on my list come the end of the year. But if I was to add anything else there, I think that's the stuff that gets an honorable mention slides into 10. Yeah. You're Plus, right. I, you know what? I disagree. I, you know, I take back whatever I just said. Can you edit that out in post? Thank you. What take are you going to say again? You know what? A couple of games on my list, maybe in the top 10. Maybe contenders. Uh, I have a top five list where if the year ended tomorrow, God forbid, you know, if the year ended, <laughs> <laughs> fucking rock, like fucking meteor hits us. But if the year ended tomorrow, uh, if a meteor I, hits us, the least of my concerns <laughs> is my top no, 10. No. Yes. <laughs> I care a lot about my top five. Even but, though that'd be awesome. Imagine if that happened. Hey, everybody, they come on. There's a there, there's a meteor coming. We're all gonna die. You know what I mean? And everybody panics, but we're like, we got to get our game of the year out. Yeah. <laughs> Fly, Janet, and Paris in. <laughs> One more pod. Um, but if the year ended tomorrow, I would actually feel pretty good about this top five that I have. Yeah. That said, when I look at my top five, I guess I think three of them are locks. The other two I have are like. One of them could make it. The other one, I don't expect to make it. Yeah. Yeah. The whole world is on fire and commenters go, of course, Blessing will put a PlayStation game yep. in his top three. Yep. Unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> this is how he wants to be remembered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have two locks that I am going to be shocked if they're not number one and two at the end of the year. But uh, besides that, I feel like I... I, I struggle to come up with five. Like, I feel like I got a four that I'm happy with, but even those two, I, I, the last two, I need to, to play more and like see where it actually sits at the end of the day. But I'm excited to get into this. Andy, I want to start with you because you seem the least confident in the list and even how you feel about them overall. So talk to me. I think it's more of a reflection of where I've been in 2024 as a video game player. Mm. And a lot of it has been 
taking a little, uh, you know, going to Costco and getting the little the little the sampler. Samples. Let me let's just little taste a little taste of this. Oh, you got shrimp over there. Oh, you got a little chicken tender here. And it's just been I haven't really dove dove in, dived in, divin in, divin. divin thank you. No, no. I haven't really experienced a game like all the way through in prior years where. I would have had at least two to three big games beaten already. And uh, this year has just been a lot of little samples here and there. I'd say probably the two locks, based on where I'm at right now, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Yes, my man. I think is uh, just one of the best designed video games uh, in terms of, you know, uh, traversal and combat and all of those things lending and playing together to then get to the ultimate goal. Uh, it's just like so seamlessly done. It's so perfect. It's like a, t a class could be taught on this shit of like how kind of just perfect it is in terms of game design. I'm not really vibing much of the story, but um, I that's a game that I will need to get back to to eventually beat because I know it just opens up more and more, but I'd say I'm like more than halfway done with that. And Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is probably the other one. I'm Loving the game. Great. Uh, thank you for the applause, by the way. Appreciate it. Um, Good com picks. Combat's amazing. It's just like, it's just kind of continues to deliver. It's goofy in a lot of ways, and it <laughs> makes me roll my eyes in some other ways. <laughs> but uh, but it's still just so much fun, and I look forward to every encounter, and I look forward to the challenge and the strategy and kind of just how intense it starts to get when you're, you know, on try number three and each try has taken like what feels like 30 minutes to do. Uh, I'm just having a lot of fun with it. Um, where, where are you in it without too many details, like just area wise? Uh, I'm almost caught up to where I was in my like original mm. playthrough, which is like I'd say a little bit more than halfway uh, ish. And um, the rest of the options are just going to be like random little indie titles that I played for several hours. Um, Blessing recommended Go Mecha Ball to me. And Go Mecha Ball is like a little random thing that popped up on Game Pass one day, and I had no idea what it was. And uh, it turns out, oh gosh, I just saw the developer tweeting about how um, a lot of people got, a lot of game developers got kind of shafted by EA over the weekend. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of like nine games. Yeah, whatever. indie titles were just coming out, and then EA dropped like 10 or 12 big, uh, a collection of games that just kind of like took over mm -hmm. all of the slots where you would have normally seen what games are trending and things like that. Uh, and Go Mecha Ball was like, I released my game the day that I forget whatever news came out or whatever. And it was like not great for Go Mecha Ball. But oh, yeah, I've, I'm trying to remember because I do remember like getting off of a big cave. It was swamped. Yeah. And then coming on being like, oh, this Go Mecha Ball game is out. And oh, that. I think it was the Xbox stuff. It might have been the Xbox. When, stuff. Yeah, maybe. Phil Spencer yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Um, it was it, it's a very, very cool indie game. I highly recommend it. Um, it's just I bought it on your recommendation. I have it in my Steam Deck. I haven't been able to boot it up yet. But it's it total just awesome. turn your brain off arcadey fun. It reminds me of like old school games that you would play on your PC where your cousin had like some weird game collection. You're like, I don't know what these games are. This isn't Nintendo, but like these games kind of it, it just kind of reminds me of like the olden days of just hopping into an arcade game and having fun. And um it's a really cool and neat roguelite. Um and I'm scrolling through the list here of other Things I think Helldivers 2 will likely be in my top 10 by the end of the year. Um, I think not only just for the conversation, but I think it's such an achievement for Helldivers 2 to come out and be as good as it was because it seemed to be like it was going to be a lot of other just random PvE type shooter games that come out and come and go and we forget about it immediately. Sure. But for it to still be in the conversation and... For me to still be looking forward to new updates, I haven't had that with a PVE shooter in quite some time. Uh, yeah. I think it's like just really, really shocking. Grabbing the baton from you, right? Yeah, Helldivers is far and away my game of the year. You know what I mean? Which is shocking for me to say. I think even coming off the preview we did of a PlayStation, where yeah. it dropped us way far in. We're like, well, is it? It's Helldivers, but whatever. Like the fact that I've put so many hours into that game and I cannot wait to get back. You know what I mean? As we were going live here where there was a tweet sent my way of like new stratagems they've added today, including a miss missile silo and stuff like this. Uh -huh. Like they're still updating that game in the ways of, Hey, here's something cool happening. Like there's a new war bond dropping on Thursday of this week, which is super cool. And then yeah, obviously there was the mechs getting leaked in quotes. They weren't really, but you know, peppered out there. Then us all going to battle to free them, then being free for a while now being locked away to stratagem. Like, Again, they're doing live service in a very interesting way where it isn't 
the biggest things happening day to day, but it doesn't need to be. I'm excited to get back to the front. I want to get back to the war. I want to get back and, you know, level up so I can get that new strategy. I have no idea for these ones that have just unlocked what, if any, their level, you know, uh, locks are and things like that, let alone a new war bond and the new weapons on there and things like that. You're talking about being excited for these little patch note updates that are coming on, let alone what they're running for the giant world event. And then you think about what the big expansions will be, you know, the additions they will add throughout the year and hopefully more like new planets, new enemies, all that stuff is just super exciting. I can't wait for more Helldivers, right? And it's that thing of like looking at the calendar next week and seeing Nick's got Helldivers question mark, Nick question mark. I'm like, I will move right now. P.S. I love you is in the way, but I'm, I mean, I think yeah. we did that to get to make space for you not be got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I would. Well, you know, I don't know. I don't make the embargoes. There's a lot of embargoes coming next week. We're worried about. So you know, I'm, I'll lot worry about a lot of embargoes. <laughs> I'll never sue is one that like I wish I had uh, more time for because it will allow other games stop to stop playing away Tekken. From it. I'm not going to stop playing Tekken, but uh, uh, hearing people talk about it and seeing like the day to day conversation and the story of Helldivers 2 continue to shift along because they have somebody there that's working as sort of like the game master that's pulling the strings and so to see somebody be like yeah like mechs are it seems like mechs are leaking or whatever and then them finally pull out, put out the mechs but you have to liberate a planet to then be able to use the mechs like seeing that story develop day by day as an outsider is so cool and that's sort of the thing that I want out of games as a service I think that's where that Absolutely. type of game can super shine right and I, for me, like the big thing was like seeing, I think Greg tweeting, uh, Tian Quen liberated, and me not knowing the context and yeah. being like, I think Greg was hacked. <laughs> 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 it's like, this is a very political tweet from Greg. Like, this is very scary. I, no, I, I think they're using social media in like the most yep. genius way you possible. Think it's definitely that thing where, you know, like Kojima, when we were leading into Death Stranding, was like, maybe you're already playing the game. And like Helldivers is that, I forget who it was, and I, I apologize from, I think it was one of you as a, who was it? Game of Clue <laughs> on Games Daily talking to me of like, it's a different level of role playing, Helldivers 2, right? Where it is the thing where you're in there and you're calling it out, and we're all screaming for democracy and the stupid little things, right? But then you take that to Twitter and then you take it to like the TikTok partners that are having so much fun with like making TikToks about their partner's obsession with TikTok or with uh, Helldivers and like Jen putting up the like, 1920s or I, I guess 1940s you know world war letter of like missing me from the front and all this like, <laughs> so it's fun. so much good and I, I just sent it to assets insert coin this week announced a hell divers collection of clothes awesome. and it looks fucking dope you know what i mean like and again it's not outrageous but like again for a fan the hoodie when you turn it it has like the logo on the back like the capes like the most basic cape. oh when you do, right? that's very flip in a second there you go see so it's like they're doing a lot of really cool shit here again that is like man I'm so happy for Arrowhead, for a game that I love so much, Helldivers 1, right? To go nine years without it, to finally get here, have it have it be this huge success, and so far, have them do everything right, you know Great. what I mean, in terms of encouraging a community and the community really rallying about it. I'm so fascinated to see the legs. I can't wait to see what they keep putting into this game. I, As I said to you, maybe infamously, we'll see yesterday, like, there, it's a, it is coming to Xbox at some point. I can't wait to see that. I'm like, let's go. It's shocking that... Uh a game like this has what you just mentioned has the legs that it does like i we're so used to these coming out and we play them for a week if that and then move on to the next thing and it's just very wild that you know the sort of a momentum it still has and it's so impressive too it being console exclusive to playstation here where it's like to that limits it even more and we always talk about for these type of games like you need as big of an audience as possible and for them to have made it work it really kind of takes lightning in a bottle and more than just one bottle. It's like there's so many different <laughs> bottles that have to line up for this to to be able to pull off what they what they've been able to do so far. And it feels like it's not going to end anytime soon. Right now, right currently on Helldivers two, three hundred and four thousand people Damn. playing. That's right? nuts. That's and insane. remember, their their all time peak is four hundred fifty eight thousand, almost four. That's that is fantastic. Right? The, the, that level of staying power so far. Tuesday. That's Steam only. A Tuesday, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah a random Tuesday. Um, and I saw a tweet yesterday of someone who's been like. You gotta love the confidence of just calling the planet Super Earth and like not explaining it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that's just what it is, and I love it. I feel like that kind of sells the the vibe of the game so much. Like like that's so many great decisions, design wise, lore wise, like the ethos to, of it all. To a, the degree of watching the um, trailers when they first were showing it, it was kind of like. There's no way this works. Like, there's no yeah, way yeah. that this is gonna like hit. I mean, maybe Greg likes it for a weekend, but like, it's so much bigger than that. Like, shout out to Arrowhead. It brings me back to like a conversation we had about we had about Dune on the kind of funny podcast, where like one of the reasons I liked watching Dune over the weekend was that that movie kind of just puts you in and doesn't really explain shit, and it is 
from the get-go, you're just in that world and you're experiencing that world. I really like that for Helldivers 2 and the review conversation that we had on PS, I think it was PS Love You, uh, that I got to host before I even got a chance to play the game. I yeah. asked the question of like, all right, so how's the story? Is there a story? And like, you guys were like, no, nah, like the story doesn't really matter, all this stuff, right? And like, it turns out that the story is just existing in Helldivers 2, right? Like they, from the get-go, they put you on Super Earth and it is like you looking online, seeing the propaganda, seeing like the online kind of narrative shifting forward via the game master and via like you know i'll oh, liberate this planet to get the mechs like you are just in hell divers too and i think that's a really cool way to tell that story yeah 100 percent. and then the little things they've thrown in to show the super it's behind it all and yeah yeah it's great plus is hell divers 2 in your top five so far it is not no wow. uh, well i mean uh, that only honestly just comes down to the fact that i've not had time to play it because like greg mentioned i've been on tekken 8 right like my top five i do have it ordered my number one is tekken 8 like easily with a bullet um i am so into that game i am like on rakes nonstop. i am on discord hanging out with like my fighting game buddies nonstop, and like we are you know leveling up together it is me it is mitchell saltzman and this roddy barrier it's a bunch of people from like the games media fighting game community but then also like we have um one of the dudes his name is Ameka. he either works at ign or used to work at ign i actually forgot now but um i met him when he uh, at ign one time and he's a big tekken dude and he is like like I think we're all good at Tekken. He is on another level where like he is so high ranked where I'm like, are you like fucking like, are you about to be in the Evo's final? Like, you know, <laughs> wow. you know, like the, like the intricacies of this game in a way where, you know, like he, and he is very, he is like kind of our Sherpa, right? Like he is kind of like the one that is, you know, sharing tips, like high level tips on, oh yeah, when somebody, when uh, this character does this, you're going to want to duck low and then, you know, dual rising, you know, yada, yada. And like explaining certain ways to play the game that are way beyond my level, but I still find myself being able to take in that information because I think all of us together as a community are getting better and better and having that experience with people that I think all started off on sort of the same level, but we're seeing, e we're seeing each other rise to the occasion and like, Helping, helping each other and like being in the discord being like hey does anybody play Alyssa because I got to practice against Alyssa and there's somebody like oh yeah I do and having that sort of experience is super special alongside like you know just the game being solid you know I, one of the things that I love but I think is also hilarious about the balancing of the game because I think that's that in the review conversation that was one of the things that we talked about it being like make or break of you know we were reviewing on the, this game on day one we're so far five out of five, but what's really going to uh, be the telling thing is once this game gets into people's hands, every week so far as Tekken 8 has been out, there's been a different character that people are saying is OP, right? And like that doesn't, it doesn't come, back, come down to, oh, they're super nerfing this character and they're super buffing this other character. <laughs> like fucking King. All I see on Twitter is about yeah, King. <laughs> like, you know, but that's just because he's a fucking grab character. <laughs> but it, the, it, it changes every week just because people are learning every week, right? It's less about like, oh, this character really is strong, and it's more about, okay, we've learned how to fight against Victor. Now we all got to learn how to <laughs> fight against this other character. Um, and it just ch changes the shifts, and I think that is sort of indicative of a game that is balanced actually really well. Like, there's so many characters. Every character has something that feels like is too much. And I think that is good, right? When you have a, like, there are very few characters where it's like, I'm not picking this person. Most of the characters there have something that give you a leg up and that make you feel super powerful. And for me, I've fallen so in love with the character that I use Victor because... You know, I like I feel like the world is my canvas. I feel like I there's still so much for me to learn as this character and get better with. So that I'm interested in that. So where do you think you're at with your Tekken 8 journey? How much further do you think it's gonna go? Not just in time played, but in yeah. terms of like your your how higher of a skill uh, base are you gonna be able to hit? And is this the deepest you've gotten into a fighting game? Uh oh, is this the deepest I've gotten into a fighting game? Probably on like the skill level side of it. Yeah. Like I think I was I got pretty good at strive and i got like decently good at street fighter but it's, i think tekken 8 so far is the best i've gotten in terms of like the amount of time played there are other fighters that i've put in a lot of time to like back in the day like soul caliber 2 i put in so much time or smash 64 this one though i think down the line i could see being in my top tier of oh yeah I, this is one that i put in a lot of time into and one that i've gotten uh, uh high in terms of skill that said i do th i have a ceiling like i think the fact that i am somebody who is playing a bunch of different games throughout the year like i am never gonna like go to Evo and make top 32 or top 64 or whatever. I do want to go to Evo this year and compete just to say I did. But even then, I don't expect to like win more than maybe one or two games. You know, I'm like, he expects to win one or two games. Oh, I do. Everybody expect to win one or two games. Yeah. I love that. What's the, what's the DLC calendar looking like for them? Like is, mm. do they have enough coming out in 2024? That's like, Oh, I may fall into a bit of a lull when, you know, uh, freaking shadow of the earth tree comes out. 
but then I'll be back when this big drop happens in whatever month or whatever. Yeah, like so the first DLC character has been announced and it's uh Eddie, which appeals to me because I'm a Hell big yes. Eddie person. And so that's gonna keep me in for sure. Those were my tech in days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They Eddie's they ended guy. they ended in the PS1. <laughs> the as PS2 far or whatever. As they went. <laughs> I'm actually not sure exactly like what they've announced. I assume like my assumption is like every three or three or four months um that feels like the right sort of cadence. And so we're but in month two of Tekken being out, and I think Eddie is like not that far away, and so I think they're probably going to keep w uh, with that. I, it, aside from characters, I think they're going to also drop like new clothing items and new customs customization items because customization is a big thing in Tekken. Um, and like I'm looking forward to that stuff. But at some point, something's got to give. Like when Elden Ring Earth Tree comes out, I'm going to drop Tekken for that time, right? Or even when like Dragon's Dogma Two is around the corner. Yeah. If I fall really into Dragon's Dogma Two, I'm fine to put down Tekken. Like even with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we had that. I put down Tekken for, you know, like a couple of weeks. I played matches here or there, but it was very much a quick, all right, let me get my fix and then hop out and get back into FF7 Rebirth. But Tekken 8 is for sure going to be my in-between game uh, between it all. Do, do you, two questions here. Do you think mm -hmm. that uh, Tekken 8 ends the year as your game of the year? Ooh, I think the Great only question. competition it has so far, well, I wrote down a handful of games. I think Elden Ring Shadow of the Year Tree is probably like its biggest competition. Uh, based on how much I love Elden Ring, right? Like, I mean, I, I love Elden Ring more than I love Tekken 8, probably, if I had to say right now. And so I think Erd Tree, I'll probably end up liking more than Tekken 8, and that'll be higher. But, like, I think I'll be shocked, absolutely shocked, if Tekken 8 isn't in my top five, if not top three. And so when I go down the list, though, right, and again, I mentioned these are in order, like, FF7 Rebirth is in there, uh, like Andy mentioned. Like, that is a game that I adore it so much for the character writing for the presentation for the music for the moments like that's one that is going to stick with me uh Bellatro is another one that's my number three right now I know I'll get into that I just have not pulled the trigger on it yet it's weird it is it is so good it is one of those ones where I, I in the way that Tekken 8 is my in-between game Bellatro is also my in-between game right now where I just want to like I just I, it's like the same thing every time but the runs are so like the upgrades and leveling up systems are so smart in terms of the jokers that you can get to like uh, modify your run and modify like the uh, the scores that you're getting uh, as well as like the cards you can add to uh, your hand like it's so addicting i think that one does have a limit though in terms of you know i'm hooked on it right now i don't know if i'll be, I'll be hooked on it in a few months just because i can see i can start to, i can start to see the walls mm. of okay there are only so so many types of cards that i can get and there's only so many upgraded jokers uh or joker upgrades that i can add to my thing but and so, how many different decks have you played with uh bless not that many i played mm, with like there you go i've i've beaten the game with four different decks uh and i'm i'm trying to like get a fifth one so i can unlock the challenge mode um but even then i think one thing with Bellatro is that the different decks so far aren't the thing that's like bringing me in because like i'll look at one and i'm like okay well why would i do this one when i can just do another one right like the so to explain the de the decks so before a run you can choose what deck you want and they all have like these minor effects on how you play the game and so like one of the decks will give you plus one hand uh the hands that you can play another one will give you like these hands, you know? yeah another one will give you like a plus one discard or like a you know um plus one hand size but you make less interest or like random shit like that um the more I unlock the hands, the more I'm like, I don't, or the more I unlock the decks, I'm like, I don't like a lot of these decks. <laughs> and so I don't know, I don't know if that's gonna be the thing that 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 drives me. Um, so it changes the play style essentially. Yeah. And um, you're like, well, I've, I'm kind of vibing with. My I know, I know how I play. I like this my strength I build. I don't want to go to a magic build sort of thing. I, I think for me, it's even the thing where I don't think they change them enough. Mm -hmm. Like, there's one where it's like, all right, plus ten uh current or plus 10 coins at the start of your thing and i'm like oh that's nothing <laughs> like, like this isn't really doing much for me uh the jokers are really what will change up your play style and i think unlocking more jokers could keep me going that's the thing that keeps things fresh but even then it's like i think there are only so many systems that you can play around with in bellatro that'll have me feeling like i'm getting super fresh runs after i'm done with like my 30th <laughs> run which is a lot like that's a lot of game time but yeah. i do think that there's a limit there at some point but i'm fucking loving it like i'm in love with the game uh my last couple of games are persona, persona 3 reload which i'm mid playthrough right now picked it back up this week and i'm still playing more and loving it and then penny's big breakaway which is another game that i beat and i, I really enjoy but penny's is the one where i don't 
I don't foresee that being on my list at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. If it is, great, right? Like, if it's my number nine or ten, that's going to be fuck a fucking dope year. But I can see that slipping. Penny's Big Breakaway and Tekken 8 are the two for me that I have as the the bottom two of, like, they're there for now just because there, there hasn't been too much else that I've been really vibing with. But I'm not sure... Uh, how much they're going to stick with me. Tekken 8, I still haven't put nearly as much time as I want to into it. I, I mm -hmm. am like halfway through the, the, um, story, the mode. story mode now, and I just love the presentation of it, and I'm such a, a fan of fighting game story modes, and I really, really appreciated Mortal Kombat the last couple of years, and even uh, Injustice and all of that, um, but I really like Tekken 8. If Mortal Kombat is the MCU blockbuster type storyline, Tekken 8 is a straight up Final Fantasy 7 advent children. Like, let's just go absolutely insane. Camera angles through the roof, like just in pure insanity and like over the top fun. And I love that the, the way that Tekken kind of just throws you into the world. They give you all the background videos for each game story to like catch you up if you haven't played. Like I haven't for the last five, seven, whatever the hell intro um, installments in this. And button mashing makes it fun. Like, yeah. if you're good, you're good, but, like, you can still get through it and, like, have fun even if you don't really know what you're doing. And I feel like the story mode is kind of teaching me the basics in a way that I appreciate a lot more than Mortal Kombat. Like, Mortal Kombat feels like you got to kind of pay attention a little bit more to, like, how it plays. And it's not always fun to do that. Like, some of it feels a little more tutorial than uh, I'd want it to, whereas Tekken... You just playing the game teaches you how to play the game. And on top of that, the reward is super awesome cutscenes. And sometimes cutscenes that even interrupt the gameplay. And I think that's the, the coolest thing where it's like mid match, something will happen. And I'm like, this is utterly fantastic. And like the type of fun that even if you don't love fighting games or don't know how to play them that well, it's still a great video game. And I always really appreciate that about genres like fighting or racing, where it's like, you don't need to be the biggest fan. They're just fun sometimes you know mm. and uh, getting a real great experience with that and yeah penny's big breakaway love it i'm um, maybe three-fourths through at this point um so much of it is so my jam it does have a little bit more oh, i wish this was better i wish that was better elements than i i wanted especially coming from that team um but i i feel like at the end of the day that's probably going to be maybe in my like nine or ten spot depending on how the rest of the year goes um but my number one and two are, are very very obvious but I'm not going to talk about them yet because I need to give you a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300,000 five-star reviews. They are on a mission to match affordability with durability, making top quality shades accessible to everyone. They have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the perfect polarized shades is a breeze. If you want an upgrade, we recommend their premium color rush lenses. Crafted with rare earth materials, these lenses bring high impact color to life, elevating reds, blues, and greens. Here at Kinda Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays, whether it is Tim looking dope doing his Pokemon Go walks, Snow Mike Mike rocking the snow goggles, or Joey just looking fantastic in her Tangle Free Shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it, they've got lost and broken protection, so you're covered from day one. And if you don't love your shades, exchange them or return them for free within 30 days. Exclusively for y'all, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people. Again, that is ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off polarized sunglasses. Shout out to Factor for sponsoring this episode. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals. Joey has been loving her Factor meals because every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prep cooking or cleanup needed and factor is flexible for your schedule get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week we've done the math factor is less expensive than takeout and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious a ton of us here at kind of funny have been so thankful for factor since we've been in the new studio and you can too head to factormeals.com slash kind of funny 50 and use code kind of funny 50 to get 50 percent off that's code kind of funny 50 at factormeals.com slash kind of funny 50 to get 50% off. Before you talk about them, go for it. Uh, Penny's Big Breakaway. Yeah. The 
the one thing I, that sticks out to me in that game where I'm like, it, maybe it bugs me more than it bugs other people, but I can't stop being annoyed by it is like the draw distance situation where things in the background are super fuzzy. Do you notice that? Like, is that a me thing? I mean, it's definitely an art. What, what did you play it on? Uh, I played it on PC. Mm, interesting. On like widescreen. I think huh. I picked, I picked, I played like the first level on PlayStation though. And I, I'm pretty sure it was on PlayStation as well. Yeah. Where, like, were... The backgrounds are just super un like not um like clean like yeah the the art style works for me okay. with the exception of the character designs uh for penny specifically and some other things like that but um yeah the i really i like the almost mario sunshine um bonus level-esque design of just like these like floating areas with like background things but yeah it didn't it didn't okay. bother me but i i can Is, see where you're they got like a depth that. of field thing going on or let me see if i can pull the game up or like if i can find an image of it because it looks weird to me mm-hmm but also, maybe it's my settings. Maybe I need to go back in my, in my yeah. computer and fix that shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the PC is just smart enough to figure it out? You know, the PC can just figure it all out? What's supposed to happen? That's weird. Um, your other two, Tim, yeah. are Final Fantasy VII Rebirth mm -hmm. and Prince of Persia. Of course. And Prince of Persia recently just went on sale. I know. What? That's so what I was going to start with. Do yourself a fucking favor and enjoy one of the best Metroidvanias that I've experienced ever. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I've am i said this before, and I can now stand by it entirely. It is my favorite Metroidvania. I do think it is, oh, at the end of it, the best Metroidvania. Having said that, I still haven't made my way through Hollow Knight, and I understand that like once I do, that might change. But so far, the level of detail, care, fun hype everything i look for in a video game was delivered in prince of persia lost crown starting the game off i was like oh, i think this might be like a three out of five and i'm a little let down it feels aimless from a design perspective and the story is from bad to non-existent somewhere in there the further i got in the more i was like oh, i was a fucking idiot and like it is there's just so much more <laughs> game there than i expected like anytime i thought oh i'm almost done i wasn't even close to almost done and it didn't drag on it felt like every new area i got to i was excited to explore and it's the perfect level of frenetic combat plus exploration plus backtracking that never felt like oh i have to do this and also never felt like well i'm just going to fast travel and all i'm doing is pulling up a menu and like hitting down an x and then it just loads quickly it's like very smart ways to get from one place to another and then you my favorite thing about Prince of Persia Lost Crown is you don't get the double jump until way into the game. Hmm. And I feel like they took that as a challenge to be like, we've played these games before. The double jump is one of the first things you get. It allows you to get to places that you've seen on the map that you can't get to. This game almost takes that as like a, hey, we're not going to design the levels around that. We're designing around a whole bunch of other things that are really, really fun. And then when we do give you the double jump, it's going to be the most satisfying thing you've ever done in a game. Yeah. And uh, the story elements that back all those moments up are just great. And the boss fights are inspired, fun, fair. Every ability you get adds momentum and locomotion abilities for traversal, but then also for combat. And that, I think, is where it just really shines. Like, being able to play this game like a Metroidvania Smash Brothers is kind of a dream it's so for me. smart, dude. And it's Prince of Persia, Metroidvania, like all, so many things that I love. And you add just like an anime aesthetic and flair to it all. And like super awesome soundtrack that just mixes any type of genre and like the at a base level. So it's the same composer as the Ori games, which I didn't know until fairly recently. And I'm like, well, mm. no shit. That's where the grandiose, massive, epic scale of it all comes from. But then there's like real authentic, specific, like cultural uh, motifs. And then on top of that, just like, well, this boss is going to have a badass guitar solo because it's cool. Yeah. And those things never feel at odds with uh, each other. And it kind of just comes together to be like, man, this is one of my favorite games ever. And I think it's my number one over Final Fantasy VII Holy Rebirth. Shit, really? And, wow. And it, this is this is hard for me to wrap my head around because to me, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is like one of my favorite experiences, period. Video games, movies, anything. I just loved my time with it. But really thinking about my top 10 game of the year, what that means, thinking back to 2020, I put Last of Us 2 over Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I stood by that because there was something about Last of Us 2, the whole package came together in a way that I'm like, I, this is flawless to me. Like this, sure. is, this is why I love video games, whatever. I feel that way about Prince of Persia Lost Crown. 
And that to me is like, damn, I put that up there with Last of Us 2. Such a different that's game for something. so many different yeah, reasons. Yeah, that's saying something. Yeah, and I, I just feel like they set out to do something, and they, they completely achieved it, and everybody should give this game a shot. And I think that there's so much more to it than there seems. Even if you just play a little bit, like, and you get in, you're like, oh, I know what this game is. You know what the game is, but it's, it's a lot more complex and a lot... Uh, more polished than it seems at the beginning, I think. That and, really excites me, actually. Yeah. Like, I mean, the more, every single time I hear you talk about this game, it makes me realize I need to get back to it. But yeah, like you talking about how much it has risen for you in terms of like, no, this is a all time, like one all time favorite, but then also, yeah, like a, a my number one for this year at the moment. Where did where did you leave off, Plus? Very early. Like, okay. I mean, it's to the it's to the thing t Tim just said as far as like the game is more polished as you go than it even seems like in the beginning. In the beginning, I was like, oh, this isn't this doesn't feel that polished. It's okay. in, in like the movement and stuff. Uh, but hearing Tim and everybody else talk about it, I'm like, okay, well, I got to give it a bit more time. And the look too. It, it's funny that like I don't think I've ever played a game that looks okay in the beginning and then looks amazing by the end. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's just the abilities add more fun effects visually. I think or, it's that production. Yeah. Whenever you want to pull off that special move. I've never really experienced, aside from like some moments in Metroid Dread, but like yes. having the camera pull out from here's your normal side scrolling perspective. Let's zoom the fuck in on the main hero doing some awesome special move colors. They play with like art in a really cool way. I just, it, and like blessing the way the combat opens up, like. It, it just gets so creative with all the things you can do. Yeah, Tim uh, described like, it as a fighting game one of these other times. Dude, it really is, man. Like, just juggling dudes and hitting them with an arrow in midair, dashing up back there. You leave... Well, I mean, it's kind of like a power, but it's, you know... You, you leave, like, a clone version of yourself, and you can go zip back up to that, like, hologram. It's just so sick, man. It just feels great in a lot of different ways. And, yeah, I think it's just one of the smartest design games ever. It is a triple A 2D Metroidvania, and that just shouldn't exist, but it does here. And like Metroid Dread is the only other example that I, I'd put up there. I guess the Ori games as well. But even then, the they're they're triple A in a different way. You know, like I feel like they really triple down on the, the aesthetics and like emotional storytelling vibe. And oh my god, they nail that. But I feel like Prince of Persia triples down on the just sheer badass factor and like what makes a video game a video game? Yeah. It's Prince of Persia. Like, they, they got it here, man. The next thing, it's a new ability that's a bow and arrow, and you're like, oh, and it's not just for combat. It also, you hit those things with it, and that, uh, it, everything plays together so perfectly. It's it's amazing. And um, the combat challenge rooms and stuff, or like even the puzzle challenge, all the challenge rooms, they're just, platinuming this game is a delight. Yeah. And that, to me, is always like the sign of like, oh, this is one of my favorite games ever, when I want to 100%. Did you platinum it? I can't remember. Well, fuck you, Greg. <laughs> I hate you so much. Is it much. something about that you weren't loyal to a platform, so it fucked you over? Did you hear about this, Andy? No. Maybe all traitors should be relieved of their head. Whoa. Do you so... so <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm saying cut off their heads, Andy. <laughs> so I was talking a big game, a lot of shit talk uh, about no shit talk, like pro talk about how, how <laughs> impressed I was uh, with Ubisoft Connect and how it's like, dude, I'm playing on my Switch, I'm playing on my PlayStation. It's fucking awesome. Oh, yeah, I get to do works. like you can do cross save. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's over. Yeah, well, it's careful over. with your trophies. Uh, oh, he so hides me. I, I, I got it all. It was all great. Hundred percent of the game time of my life didn't pop and i was like that's weird and i go back and look at my trophy list and i'm like i definitely did that definitely did that oh, what's going on here switch. did those things on switch oh wow yeah so must be the fate of all tyrants <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that's a whole thing you bringing up ori uh makes me want to also bring up no rest for the wicked uh which is from moon studios um the they did like an early alpha access, right? they did an yeah. early access demo thing for influencers and for some people in media uh, and it's hitting early access next month. Um, I, feel, I feel like this year I've just poured in a lot of hours into different early access type games. I'd say probably the weakest. That's what I'm, they call you EA. Huh? That's what you call the biggest fan of EA. Yeah, I love EA, man. Uh, I would say that Nightingale is probably the weakest one in Shrouded. I'm looking very forward to seeing how that game looks in December. But uh, No Rest of the Wicked by far is like just the most impressive that you could play right now whenever that early access period actually begins it's in april sometime uh it is just a stunning in art direction 
the combat feels incredible and there's also going to be some sort of crafting element to it which you can then like go back to a little i don't know a, a town and kind of start rebuilding it i haven't that, that wasn't part of the demo uh they really only allowed you to do sort of the combat intro uh in the video game but holy shit man this game just like blew me away in a, in a myriad of different ways and the art style reminds me so much of watching um arcane on netflix mm. uh the league of legends animated show which is fantastic and yeah man the art direction's insane the boss the bosses the enemies uh it's very souls like in its combat um except you don't drop any souls that you then need to go get it's just like more of like oh, do i want to pick a dex build do i want to be a magic uh spell slinger or do i want to have that the big heavy two-handed weapon um but dodging doing the backstabs doing the parries it is like the total fucking package. And I was already looking forward to it when we first saw it at the, I think the Game Awards, or mm -hmm. was it a state of play or something? Uh, but actually getting my hands on it was like, holy shit, that rises to the very top of uh, most anticipated this year. All right, you're making me want to give this one a shot. Because I, this like, incredible. Like, yeah, it, no, this look, it looks like great, it. but gameplay-wise, it's like, not necessarily my thing. And like, especially from this team, I was like, ah, I, want, I want something different. But uh, yeah, you're selling me on it for sure. I, I do have an update on Penny's Big Breakaway. I'm watching gameplay videos. It looks way better in the gameplay videos. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what's up with my PC settings, but I got to fix something. Yeah, well, you upsetting. were playing an ultra. They only gave you like an ultra wide option. Like he did full screen. Oh, yeah. I was playing full screen ultra wide. But it like still stretched oh. it for some reason. It wouldn't let him not stretch it. Maybe oh, that but was I like fixed, an early... I fixed that. Uh. Yeah. I found like the correct setting for that. But, yeah. I mean, the yeah. game doesn't run great. Period. Okay. But like visual, like it didn't. I didn't have any problems with how it looked necessarily. Yeah, I just like the draw. Just, like, anything that was like outside of the draw distance just got super fuzzy for me, and I'm like, mm. oh, that's a weird artistic decision that you made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greg, anything else you want to talk? Yeah, about? Yeah, my here? second, of course, is WWE. Uh, you know, 2K24. Just uh, obviously a great, very much a great game. On I want to stop you there real quick, just because I haven't said this on a show. I have not touched uh, 2K24 until um, last Friday when we did the the stream. We all just kind of played. That was that was fun. So much fun. Hey, who won that stream, by the way? That was you, Big Doug. <laughs> <laughs> you're but, all about it, man. I mean, I was like not rooting for you for a little bit there, but yeah, you won. I've never like, been so mad champion. in my life. Yeah. <laughs> it was I was fighting three v one. Like nobody was on my. Like it was what <laughs> Nick and Greg immediately were like, "Yes, oh, holes, <laughs> come on, we're back, baby." <laughs> Look at Roger. I'm like, Roger, they're working together. Are we going to work together? And Roger's like, fuck that. I'm like, okay, well, like, what's going on? And then, like, the, it's a, first of all, it's a money in the bank, which sucks. I hate money in the bank. And then, what, you're grabbing the, the money that's in the bank? And, like, <laughs> as, as they're doing that, fucking Roger and Nick are just laid down, surrounding me, boxing him out, boxing me out. And I have no way to, like, try to get Greg down from the ladder. It sucked. You can't step over Tell you what, in if this you game. can beat Roger in a two out of three falls match, I'll put my title online against you. All right, let's do Whoa. It. And put it on the schedule. Whoa. Maybe. But bless. Yeah. How much fun did we have when, oh, it, it, when it was me, you, Mike, and Raj, right? Oh, yeah. And we sat down, picked up the sticks, and it was just like we were kids again at a sleepover type vibes. It really was just like, like, yeah, we rented this game and let's try it out. None of us know how to play. That doesn't matter. There's a beauty to wrestling games that I have not experienced since SmackDown versus Raw, like the first one. Like it was so much fun, and I can't wait to get back to it. I've been trying to, but having some issues with my portal. We'll talk about that. It was a good later time. More. But yeah, great, great time. But back to you, Greg. No, I mean, I mean I've mean, i talked at length about it, right? There's a review up and all that stuff, and I've done a couple different streams, and yada, yada, yada. I just think 2K24 is the bee's knees, you know what I mean? And yeah. Uh, yeah. I put up a tweet about it last night. Last night was the first night where I had to work so late that I didn't get to play. And it was like, it got to me. I'm like, oh, fuck. I mean... Don't get me wrong. I still turned it on to get my, my, my daily, my faction reward for my login bonus. I got that. But it's oh like, God. it was the first time I haven't been able to sit down and put actual hours into it because that's what I've been doing every night before bed. And it's just like, you know, again, it's such a uh, deep bench of game modes where I do sit down and it's like, all right, well, today I do want to do my faction, but I just want to focus on this. So I'm, or I'm just doing faction wars. Or no, I'm going to actually, I started my own GM without Roger. Okay, now I want to get back to the storyline. I actually want to finish my gruesome Greggy storyline to create a, a female wrestler so she can go off and do the next, you know, like there's like so much still to do, let alone trophy chase, let alone just go online and duke it out. After the stream, I, when I got home, I played the roguelike mode that they yeah. added to it because Roger was That's telling faction me about wars, it. Yeah. yeah, faction wars. It was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, the one thing is that I got kind of deep into my run and I was doing a tag match and they've added this new mechanic to tag uh, matches that I like where 
You know how like when somebody pins, the ta their tag team partner will come in to break up the pin. Um, that's always kind of been a plague on the video games. Sucks. It always sucks. <laughs> because it happens and it's like, cool, these matches are just never ending because then you have to hit the person off the rope. They've added a thing where now you can't invade more than once during like one tag. And so now it is a thing where I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going to pin them. They're going to break it up and I'm going to pin them again. Like you, First thing, I mean, it's the only once per match, right? So the first thing I always do, especially in six mans, right? is just like, as soon as I get the guy down the first time, pin him, trigger it for that guy, pin him, trigger it. If he makes the tag, immediately pin that guy to trigger it for the one guy who hasn't done it yet. Like I'm yeah. on top of the game so that when I hit my finishers, my signature, which I, I love as an addition. Yeah. The thing is like, again, deep into my roguelite run, I'm doing a, a, a two-person tag it's uh you need like two falls uh in order to yep. win and my game bugged out to where i step out of the ring yeah and the referee starts counting for me and i try to get back into the ring i can't get back into the ring oh no and i'm like what the fuck and so i'm like press i'm literally like standing on the on like the side of the ring pressing every back button because i'm like i'm yeah, pretty yeah, sure yeah, you yeah. just need to move up but it doesn't let me so i'm pressing rb i'm pressing everything it's not let me do it he counts to 10 that's one fall and i'm like fuck is it your second falls gonna be outside yeah and then I'm, I'm realizing that like it for whatever reason the game bugged out to where it thinks that i am the tag partner and it doesn't want to let me in even though i'm the main person oh, yeah, 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 and so yeah. i like <laughs> that he counts to 10 again and I'm, the whole time i'm like no please <laughs> like i'm so deep in there this must run. be a way yeah like this can't be happening bless like, I really bless. Don't <laughs> yeah like, I'm, I, like i was it, it felt like like what a meme of me like just being outside the jail cell being like no, please, <laughs> please please and i yeah i couldn't get it in that in my run and it felt it was bummer it bummed me out but it was fun yeah, yeah. I'm, Is I'm it really enough to bring you back? I, I was, I was, not. A, uh, I guess it was unexpected that a rogue like would be what would grab you for uh, the wrestling game. Yeah, I mean, well, it. I really like roguelikes, and so even Roger just mentioning that I had one was enough to get me in. I don't think I'm gonna play the roguelike mode again. Yeah. Like, I think, I think it's a great idea. I think it needs a bit of polishing and a bit of like better carrot on the stick right like I, I need the better things to pull me through and really make me feel like i'm choosing things i do like that uh there are certain points in the run where you do like kind of a boss match mm -hmm. and the first one i did was it was like my faction versus the um what do they call it the table the head of the brotherhood the bloodline the bloodline head of the household my full house and so i beat them and then i got roman reigns and so now it's like my faction turns into like uh, Roman Reigns. I had uh, Cody uh, Rhodes, but I had like the toy version yeah, of Cody yeah, Rhodes. Yeah, I had Dusty, uh, and then like I think what my fourth person was Cena. No, I oh, would, I'm, I'm not. I've not gotten Cena yet. Do I wait? Do I have him? Do, do, is there it's a, a it's a locker code. Can you send that to me? Sure. Yeah. yeah no. Uh, no, I had like Rey Mysterio. Gotcha. So it was those four. Those four, and I'm like, oh yeah, I like all these wrestlers. And right. So I I I like the idea of the further I get, I can kind of create my ideal team and then go from there. Yeah. So but, yeah, you know, yeah. one of the things that's cool about it, right, is that you have your my faction, those four cards that you're playing with, and those four cards are the four characters, right? When you start the roguelike, yeah, as you go through, your first off can get armor buffs to put armor over your health bar to keep your wrestlers long healthier longer because you carry over your your oh. uh, yeah your health and damage, limb damage, and any ever as well as your health bar match to match to match right so there's a bunch of different things there's one where you get to where it's uh all right cool you're gonna get a bonus but you're also gonna get a random wrestler who's gonna have you know i think it's 10 percent, or maybe it's 5 10 and 25 percent uh damage done to one of their limbs or whatever and then there's the limb recovery ones and all these different things and there's credits to buy things outside of it so you're of course building out your deck in my faction in general but the point here is yeah when you beat the faction boss you're, which is a team their faction you get to then go pick one of them if you want to to add to your faction on that run now what it does outside of that in the world of my faction is unlocks that card for purchase so the the credits you've been earning in not my faction overall but in faction wars you can then go and spend like i you know i did a very similar thing at one point and had the rock uh, pop up i beat the rock and then i came back and i bought the rock so i can use him now in my faction and everything else no, awesome, awesome indeed. Very Do you awesome. have any any other games, Greg? No, those are the two that have stood out for me. You know what I mean? And like, have really fucked up. I think a lot of things in terms of, uh, you know, oh, we have Rise of the Ronin. Yeah, but yeah, but Andy and Bless keep saying it's like fine. And I don't. I'd rather play Helldivers tonight. I'd rather play yeah. WWE tonight, right, with my free time versus what I can play at work. Uh, and same thing with like, you know. Uh, so those two games and that popularity and the desire to still play those, right? I know that nothing alters my opinion of a game when I'm playing it and I don't want to play it. So like Final Fantasy, I still haven't touched. Like I have it there, but I just don't have the urge to play it and I don't want to force that because if I force it, I'm never going to like it for sure. Yeah. Do you think you all, you'll ever play Final Fantasy 7? I don't know. It's, it's weird because right? I liked Final Fantasy 7 so much and hearing you guys talk about Final Fantasy uh, Rebirth, right? I'm like, 
yeah, but it's like I look at it and I'm just like, for some reason, nothing's making me go, oh, I got to play that. You guys being as far as you are, I mean, you beating it and you being as far as you are, like, do you think Greg... Like, I think so. I think Greg should hop into it. I think Greg would enjoy it. Yeah. I think I like the first one, right? It was the first Final Fantasy ever rolled credits and I enjoyed it. But I think the fact that it ended so discombobulated in terms of like what had been a quote unquote simple story to all of a sudden there's ghosts and this and the timeline's fucked up and I'm just like, I don't understand these references. It does snap back immediately back into being, oh, this is easy to follow. Again. More direct. Okay, yeah, okay. more direct. But I, I do think it also in, immediately presents questions that are really kind of cool to, like, it, it hits you with some like what actually happened sort of shit right yeah, at the yeah, beginning yeah. right at the start of it and you're okay. like "Ooh, whoa this is kind of neat and i wasn't expecting to even have these sort of questions i thought i just thought i would have been lost for reasons of me not playing the original or whatever but this is actually really sick i think i think you'll enjoy it, it. it it's like a checklist open world game in yeah a way that i think you vibe with okay and so i could see you being into that okay i'm yeah. still gonna yeah i still have it I haven't de- you know deleted it i have the best intentions of getting to it yeah. But I gotta, I gotta fight for democracy. I, get I gotta, it. I, I gotta totally get freedom. it. Do you guys have? Is there anything looming in the first half of 2024 that you think might Dude, enter this conversation? I hope Dragon's Dogma Two is yes. as good as what the previews are saying. Yeah, because the previews are making that sound like it's about to be game of the year, and like that's a game that when I previewed it, previewed it, I was like, okay, I'm enjoying this, but this is. No, it, it didn't strike me as something that needed to be on my radar necessarily. Like I, I think I mentioned that it plays. A bit like it's from the PS3 era. Yeah, you did say that. that, I was talking about the original is from the PS3 era. So, like, you know, I came out of the preview being like, all right, I got my eye eye on this, but you know, it is what it is. Now, seeing people who have gotten to play a lot more, what they're saying about it, and like, sort of the the depth of it, and like how you can like really get into the nitty gritty of your class and all this stuff, that has me super excited. Like, people seem very jazzed about it. It's definitely Dragon's Dogma. It's it's no rest for the wicked. It's uh, I know. Hyperlight Breaker was like, hey, we're probably going to be delayed until mid whatever 2024. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what the recent update is, there is, but uh, I got to assume sometime, maybe mid year or like fall or winter. <laughs> I know that's not like the first half, but uh, that's still one that I'm just like super jazzed about. And uh, we're going to get to uh, play it at GDC, which I'm very, very excited about finally. Um, and uh, yeah, aside from that, uh, that that's kind of it for me. Like I I know that I will likely be going back to, um, having to beat Prince of Persia. Unfortunately, I'm still in a, a very hardcore Valorant phase that I mm-hmm. didn't expect to be in this year. It just kind yeah. of like kind of hit at a random moment. So that's my that's been like Tekken for blessing. Where w- with Valorant for me, it's like, oh, I have a spare hour. Let me just you know play a match real quick at the end of the night it's like if i haven't played that day i feel like ah shit i didn't get a match in today um but yeah other than that i uh, i'd say that those are the ones that i'm looking forward to in the immediate future i would say one that i wanted to call out because it comes out a little over a month is another crab's treasure which i know we're we're all gonna probably at least play a little bit oh yeah i do have like a short list of like games that are coming up in the next like in the Q2, essentially, up until June, and it is Dragon's Dogma 2, Pepper Grinder, um, I Eden Chronicle, 100 Hero. I think that one might be a little surprise. It looks awesome. Yeah, yeah it looks yeah. really cool. It's like a Suikoden successor type game. And the more we see it, the more I'm like, this looks like it could be really fun and really special. Um, Tales of Kinzera, Zao, I'm sure it might hit, hopefully, like a Prince I of Persia. I hope that fucking Me crushes. Too. That the demo was awesome. fantastic, and yeah, I yeah. really, really liked it. And mm-hmm. I was playing it right after I played Prince of Persia, and it was holding up. So that's Hell a yeah. good sign. And then there's Stellar Blade, uh, Hellblade 2, Paper Mario, and then Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree. Like, already the next... Three, the uh, three and a half months. Yeah, the next three and a half months are still looking like they're filled with games that, for me, are ones worth paying attention to. And so, yeah, it's going to be another banger year. But more importantly, three weeks or you know, two and a half weeks before Shadow of the Earth Tree, June fourth, Destiny Two Final DLC. Greg, is it our time? The final shape. Get your Ghostbusters ready. I was going to say it's not time. Ghostbusters content is here next week. I will be back in Destiny. But if, did you see I can make the ship period. I can make the ship look like the Ecto one? Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me right now? It's a good prep time because that's what happened with me last year. It was like yeah. getting ready for I'm already blanking on what that uh, Lightfall was what, what yeah, the yeah, DLC was. Cool. But it was like, oh, Lightfall's coming out in a month. Let's start playing Destiny again. And I did, and it was like, holy shit, I really played Destiny too. And I'm hoping that I can pry myself away from Valorant in preparation for 
uh, Destiny 2 Final Shape, but I'm I'm ready to go back in, dog. You t- you let me know when. I'm Chris fucking An- ready. Chris Anka, the weapons arbiter, will run us through everything. I don't like him. He's the homie. No. Oh. No, I love Chris. You, know you love Chris. <laughs> Paper Mario is the big one for me. I mean, I help lead too as well. Uh, but Paper Mario, I, I'm again, I keep saying this. I'm just so excited for you guys to even be able to give this one a shot because, like, this is the one. And the remake just looks so dang good, man. Like, the level of care they're putting into it and, like, seeing what happened with Metroid Prime last year where they took a GameCube game that was perfect and then just made it better i'm like just do that for paper mario thousand year door and we are going to be in such a good spot and andy i just feel like this one i was trying to get you on mario rpg last year uh this one though i feel like there's something about the cutesy like the comedy elements to it that i think are just it's very up your alley okay yeah so i mean i've always loved the vibe of, of paper mario games for sure um one that i uh, one last one that i want to call out um is a game that I played during Scene Next Fest, and apparently, unfortunately, is coming out three days before Shadow of the Earth Tree. So get your gaming in immediately if you can. Is uh, if you can look this up, Barrett. It's hashtag Blood B L U D. Uh, it's oh, a it, it's a game that I showed to many of you all, and um, it just straight up looks like a Cartoon Network game, and it's a there it's a go. it's a Zelda like top down like uh, Link to the Past style game. Um, it's just blown away by the production values, by the animation in there. It's a very similar story to um, Kane and Bridge of Spirits, where they are like an animation studio that were like, hey, what if we kind of made a game? And that's very similar here. This is a like a, a 2D kind of like animation studio with a lot of animators and motion graphics people. Oh, and unbelievable. Uh, kind of came together to make this video game. Um, and it just looks insane. Like every scene of it doesn't look playable, but it, it all is. And every one of these animations looks incredible. Uh, it's a story. You're a, a little girl who ends up finding out that your mom used to like fight vampires. And awesome. you have it. You have this sort of like inner power within you that you also need to be a vampire kind of like hunter or whatever. Um, but you're fighting all sorts of different monsters uh, in the world. And yeah, it's just really, really neat. It's hilarious. Uh, it has its own version of Twitter, and everybody's kind of talking. Uh, you know, everybody's putting up random things. And there's a girl who's like into ASMR, and she tweeted out pss, 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 like just ASMR sounds. <laughs> it's just great. Like it's it's got such a great uh, sense of humor and a great vibe to it. But yeah, art style and just uh, the I combat mean, alone is very very adorable. Some of these characters seem pulled like pulled right out of Cartoon Network. One hundred percent. In a way where I'm like. Hopefully, Cartoon Network is chill. Because you know? <laughs> if this was like a Pokemon art style, I feel like Nintendo would be getting out their chair. Yeah, we'd see like one of the characters. I'm like, oh, that's like, uh, what's his face? Like the the, one the, of the evil like, scientist from Dexter's Lab. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, it's Mojo, very Mojo. much uh, Dexter's Lab, uh, Powerpuff go- uh, Girls. Like, but like um, one of the kids looked coded. like, um, what's the name of the black kid from uh, Billy and Mandy? This is one of the one of the oh, shit. one of the characters looked exactly like that character. Mandark. Thank you for Mandark call out oh, on the, the other Mandark. guy. Mandark. Yeah. But hold on, hold on. This is coming, just coming out June 18th? It's not yeah. early access or something? No, it's coming out June 18th. Jesus Christ, that doesn't seem real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. That looks Im- so, incredible. Uh, it was shown off immediately. It was shown off in one of the other sort of like summer showcases uh, during the summer. It may have been IGN's sort of thing where they show off yeah. a, a sort of suite yeah, of different it was, games. Yeah, uh, Fan Fest for IGN. Yeah, and like I didn't even know that that's when they had first showed it. I just saw it during uh, Steam Next Fest sort of... Um, you know, uh, here's a list of different games that everybody should try out or whatever. And uh, I saw that I, it was a lot of people who watched a skill up video that were like, oh, Andy, skill up talked about this one game. You should try out this game. And it it was very, very impressive. Super cool looking. Very Irwin very is very the character cool. I was thinking of. Irwin. Shout out, Irwin. <laughs> Shout out to God. Irwin, everybody. Man dark. Let's know in the comments below who your favorite Cartoon Network character is and what your game of the year so far is. And if there is a game coming up in Q2 that you think might take that top spot. Uh, until next time, I love you all. Goodbye.